In-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductory offer. See the link in the description to sign up. By the 13th of April 1996, Manchester United appeared on an unstoppable charge to the Premier League title. Alex Ferguson's side had won 10 of their last 11 matches and, in the process, overhauled Newcastle's 12-point lead. With four games left and a six-point cushion, they travelled to Southampton and, despite Ferguson's pre-match protestations, turned out in glum grey. Their Umbro-produced second kit worn four times already that season without a win. And Ferguson's paranoia had deepened by half-time as United trailed 3-0 after goals from Ken Monku, Neil Shipperley, and Matt Letizier. In response, he forced his players to change into their blue and white third strip, explaining afterwards that they couldn't pick each other out in grey. United lost the game, but did win the second half, and would of course go on to win the title. So, was Ferguson simply a sore loser, or did the grey kit genuinely almost cost Manchester United the league? Well, there was scientific evidence behind his distaste for the grey strip. World-renowned vision specialist and long-time United employee Gail Stephenson had warned him about the perils of playing in grey. The Liverpool University professor stressed as early as pre-season that the kit could affect the success rate of aerial passes and diminish focus. Much to Ferguson's dismay, commercial commitments prevailed. Then United chairman Martin Edwards saw the kit as groundbreaking because it was designed to function as both a football strip and leisure wear. And actually, the stats don't support the science. Since the inception of the Premier League in 1992, until the end of the 2019-20 season, grey has been worn as the majority kit colour in 171 games, with the side supporting it victorious 65 times. That's actually a healthy win percentage of 38%, a number even more impressive considering that all of those victories were earned away from home and that the average win percentage on the road is just 26%. In fact, grey is the fourth most successful majority colour behind runaway leader red, blue and claret. It's of course hardly surprising that red is the most successful colour, given 17 of the Premier League's 28 champions have had it as their home kit. At the other extreme, Swindon Town, Middlesbrough and Nottingham Forest are amongst those dragging down its average. Blue, meanwhile, is on the rise in the Premier League colours table, recently surpassing claret in second place following Manchester City's 2018-19 title win. Liverpool's first top-flight triumph since 1989-90 last season broke a streak of six straight champions in blue, starting with Manuel Pellegrini's Manchester City in 2013-14. But even with four Premier League titles to their name, City's sky blue is still not a historically dominant colour, with a win percentage of under 35%. Coventry City's underwhelming 76 victories in 271 Premier League games is partly to blame. And Gail Stevenson also argued natural colours, like sky blue, that blend in with the environment, are less visible and thus contribute to subpar performances. The most mediocre colours are black and white, which won't please Newcastle United fans, both lose slightly more than they win. And the most jinxed colour is green rather than grey. Leeds United were the first English side to complain about wearing it in December 1995, and it's the only colour to have a loss percentage of over 50%. Teams in it have taken a miserable 359 points from 385 games, and seven of the last 15 teams relegated from the Premier League have had a green kit. Yellow and orange are also in the relegation zone, suggesting that brighter isn't necessarily better. Now, Naturally, there'll be those who argue that such analysis is manipulated to fit the neat narrative. And it's true that isolating colours discounts other obvious factors determining performance, most notably the players' own skills and the tactics of their coaches. But there is data that suggests colour may indeed influence psychology, and that's most apparent when looking at a waveform. Curiously, home kits do not perform well on the road, even though they remain the preferred choice when eligible for important games and derbies. Teams used their home strips, or a variation of it, in almost half of their away fixtures last season, averaging an underwhelming one point per game whilst taking 25% more points in away strips across the season. Only five sides had a better record in their home colours compared to their away ones. Manchester United benefited the most from using their home strip away from Old Trafford, winning over half a point more on average, 
Yet for Manchester City, like 14 other clubs, it was the opposite. They took nearly a full point less in their sky blue kit. It's not just outfield players' shirts that matter either. Goalkeeper jerseys can influence outcomes as well. The science suggests red might actually be the best colour for keepers. News that won't please former England goalie David Seaman, who moaned that his majority scarlet Euro 96 kit made him look like a packet of sweets. And red is not a popular jersey choice with Premier League goalies, and no club picked it as their main shirt colour last season. This was a big mistake, according to University of Chichester sports psychologists Ian Greenlees and Michael Einan. In a 2013 study, the pair proved that players are twice as likely to miss a penalty if a goalkeeper is wearing red compared to green or blue. Greenlease theorised that red fills penalty takers with fear, and in open play has an almost magnetic effect enticing players to shoot straight at the keeper. Perhaps that's why former England keeper Ben Foster pulled off a record 996 stops between 2010 and 2020, with plenty of them coming in red for Watford. Of course, such considerations will obviously never lead the conversation, with every aspect of the modern football kit instructed by commercial considerations. As the Premier League evolves, we are far more likely to see additional strips, styles and ultimately colours, regardless of whether homogeneity and high visibility are the purest formula for success. If a team were ever to switch kits again at half-time, it will probably be a marketing stunt rather than a protest. The Athletic is in-depth sports coverage that helps fans see the game from every angle. And Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per month. See the link in the description for details of this introductory offer. For football fans, that's access to the writing of journalists dedicated to your team, plus David Ornstein, Phil Hay, Daniel Taylor and many more. Not to mention over 400 full-time writers offering inside access and independent analysis of every team that you follow across every league that you care about. Get local expertise and unmatched league-wide perspective. The Athletics writers are in the bubble, on the field and behind the scenes as it all happens. Catch up, go deep, and join the conversation on the most important happenings in sports. <laughs>